strange request to you and a request that you may not get all the time but what is the smallest number you can think of the smallest number well why don't we consult the number line right the number line could probably give us an answer so smallest number we're dealing with positives here no negatives because we're dealing with quantities and magnitudes so what's the smallest number you can think of that is still bigger than zero no zero it still has to be an actual magnitude still has to be an actual quantity but it is not zero and it has to be the smallest thing you can ever think of okay well one could say one one is the smallest right because you know one comes after zero but you can see here in the number line there is some space between zero and one and you can argue that another number can be smaller 0.1 so 0.1 is even smaller but you can go even smaller than that to get 0.01 you can go smaller than that to go 0.001 and you can just keep you know exponentially going smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller 0.0001 0 0.0000000000 yeah there is no end there is no final last smallest number you can always keep going smaller no matter what number you claim to be the smallest number to be the smallest real number you can always get another number to say that it's actually smaller so what if i were to you know let's say i were to redraw the number line like this to redraw the number line uh like this it's a slanted number line but who cares so let's say this is zero and this is whatever you claim to be the smallest number there's always a space between zero and that number thus there is no smallest real number there is no real number okay so yeah the real number line doesn't seem to provide us with everything that we want as we thought you know it's not like amazon.com it's now it's now like amazon in real life where it's not always in stock so um how do we deal with this how do we meet this requirement of having a number that's smaller than any real number well to be smaller than any real number you can't be a real number because whatever real number you throw at me i can always find a something smaller so i can't be real and i can't be finitely small if you give me something that's finitely small and it's real i can always you know divide by 10 and get something even smaller so i have to be so small that i i, can, I should even pers you know uh, surpass 0 0.00000 like a thousand zeros a thousand zeros I should even be smaller than a thousand zeros before one how to be smaller than this to be the smallest possible number the only way is to be 0 0.00000 infinite number of zeros infinite number of zeros then one so what would that number be you'd have to be infinitesimally small, infinitely small. So, so, so small. Infinite, to be infinitely small is like you, it's like the only way to see a length that is infinitely small, you have to zoom in and zoom in to a factor of infinity. And that would take you, I would say, mm, about an infinite number of years to, to, to get to that zoom factor. Just keep zooming in, zoom, 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 just zooming in in order to see a line that is even remotely visible, you'd have to zoom in to an infinite extent. It would take you past the heat death of the universe, past the rapture, uh, past the big crunch. You know, everyone has died. You have died. All of technology has died. That's, that's when you'd be able to see a line of infinitesimal length. To be infinitely small is to be infinitesimal. And we don't have an actual numerical value to assign to an infinitesimal number. Like, let's say, we, we had this number, this infinitesimal number, it's so infinitely close to zero, man. It's so infinitely close to zero that if I were to actually draw the actual distance, you can't see it. You can't even distinguish this number to, to zero. You can't even distinguish it. And the thing is, we can't even give it a, a, you know, a numerical designation. You know, we can have like 0 0.000, and I could say that there are an infinite number of zeros, then one. But that isn't even accurate. You know, if uh, who says it has to be like this? It can even be 0 0.000 then 2 instead of 1. Or maybe 3. Or maybe 4. The thing is, to be infinitesimal is you are... It's difficult to really put into numbers. It's really difficult to really have a definite number to, to really express to be infinitely small. 
So of course, we just use a symbol and uh, we use Greek symbols when it comes to math. So of course we use the symbol epsilon. So epsilon is like an inverted three. So it's so infinite, epsilon is so, so, so small that on the number line, it, you can barely see any difference between epsilon and zero. You just think epsilon is the same as zero because it's so, so, so small, you know? So of course, epsilon being the infinite has small, uh, it would be, it would be so small you can say that it's one over infinity because you know to get something small you take one over a big number like one over a hundred gives you something quite small and one over a thousand gives you something even smaller and as I keep cranking up the number of zeros I end up getting something that's super super small so once this, this number this denominator number becomes infinity where the zeros are infinite and it becomes an infinite number is practically one over infinity you know, so the infinitesimal epsilon is practically one over infinity. Now, let's talk about epsilon's big brother, infinity itself. Now, can we give a numerical designation or at least a value that we can treat algebraically somewhat how epsilon we can treat them algebraically? Just like epsilon, we need we also need a number to represent something infinitely big. The opposite, where we'd ask, tell me a number that is bigger than any real number rather than a number smaller, but rather number that's bigger so epsilon is smaller than any real number but what number is bigger than any real number what is this what number is so big well can't be infinity because infinity is a concept so we have to have a number that you know has that that embodies the concept of being infinite embodies the concept of being infinite but still it's a quantity we can deal with number wise and that number is omega well, omega, uh, not to be confused with the capital omega, which is, you know, uh, what we use in electrodynamics and circuits, um, you know, like this omega, not to be confused with that, because that's used for air resist, not air resistance, I mean, resistance of a conductor, but omega, the lowercase omega, um, I, I like to think that, you know, omega represents infinity because, you know, uh, the Bible verse, uh, I'm the alpha and I'm the omega, beginning and the end. And if you think about it, this omega is the end of all the counting numbers. So, you know all the counting numbers, natural numbers, one, two, three, four. You know, on the number line, if I were to draw that on the number line, let me just draw that for a bit. Okay, yeah. Shapes, shape, 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 shapes. Okay. So, let's say I were to start at zero, then I'm going to have one, two, three. As I go on forever, after an infinite number of numbers, after all these guys, I would eventually reach omega. Yeah, so omega is the number after all the natural numbers, and it's the first infinite number. The first one, actually. It's countably infinite. So it's the first kind of infinity, the smallest kind of infinity. If you want to learn more about um, other infinities, you can watch num Number Files video on it, and Vsauce has made a video on it also. And after omega is omega plus one. Yeah, we can treat these guys like actual algebraic qu entities, you know. You know, like, and also um, epsilon. Epsilon is not the smallest infinitesimal number. We can have even smaller infinitesimals like epsilon over two. So yeah, epsilon is smaller than any real number, but we can also have a number smaller than epsilon. So yeah, um, so pretty much that is these are hyperreal numbers. Numbers that are not real, they're hyperreal. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, so these numbers, the numbers over here on this side, the numbers that deal with infinite sizes and are so infinitely big, they're so big that if you start counting from three, you will not be able to get to, you will not be able to, to get here after a million years. And they're so big that if you started from omega and you counted backwards, you know, you can get to omega minus one, omega minus two, omega minus three, you're counting backwards, you will never get, get the three. You'll never get there. It will take you an infinite number of years. So yeah, if you have the time, sure, that's great, but you only have the time unless you're God. And if you're God, I guess you can do that, but you know, God has more important things to do, like saving lives. So um, yeah, so of course, these are hyper real numbers. And um, the thing is, there's not just one infinitesimal, you can have other infinitesimals that live around, you know, these usual real numbers, like one, you can have an infinitesimal living near there, you know, 
we can call that 1 plus epsilon. So it's infinitely close to 1, or maybe an infinitesimal living close to 2. 2 plus epsilon. Aha. So that's cool. But we can also have, you know, we can also have infinitesimals living before 1, you know, like 1 minus epsilon. So it's infinitely close to 1, but just to the left of 1. So you have these clusters of infinitesimals that live near your real numbers. And they're, these clusters are called monads, which are, yeah, do not confuse them with another thing in biology. Uh, do not confuse them, because I have a friend who confused them, and it was hilarious. But yeah, do not confuse monad with another thing. Yeah, these are clusters of infinitely of infinitesimal numbers that live infinitely close to real numbers. So yeah. Um, so what? Uh, so basically, what is this? So where do the these uh, hyperreal numbers live? Do they live on the real number line? Well, no, 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 they do not. They don't. They do not live on the real number line. They live on a different kind of number line, but it looks exactly like the real number line. So why don't I just draw two number lines to show you what I'm talking about? Uh, shapes, shapes. It's a very handy tool. Um, and a second one. So yeah, I'm gonna draw two number lines. This is your regular real numbers. Uh, so you got your zero, you got your negatives, you got your positives, you have your fractions. I don't know, you can even have, I don't know, your, your irrationals, if you like. You can even have your transcendentals, like pi, right? So we have that, but you know, on the flip side, the these are gonna be, um, uh, these, this is going to be the hyperreal number line. It has exactly the exact same numbers here, exact same guys here. So, so nothing is different except for one thing. You have your monads, your your clusters of infinitesimals that live around here. You have your negative epsilon. You have your epsilon. You have your you have your one plus epsilon. You know, you got your infinitesimals. You have your clusters of infinitesimals scattered around here. And it's not just that. After after an infinite number of numbers here, you eventually reach Omega, I've kind of run out of space, but Omega is there, and also Omega plus one. So this hyperreal number line contains everyone in the regular real number line. So everyone in the regular real numbers, you know, this uh, this is the real number. Oh, that's a very bad looking symbol. Just gonna erase that for a bit. Nothing happened. No, do not tell anyone. Um, yeah, this is the real number. This is the real number line, but the hyperreal number line is called star r instead of just regular r. Star r. So yeah, star r, and it it's it's um the real numbers are a subset to star r means everyone in the real number line still exists on the hyperreal number line. Just that hyperreal number line has some added bonuses, has some added extra stuff, you know, to spice it up. It has these 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 monads and eps and infinitesimals scattered around it, and also your transfinite numbers like these infinitely big numbers like omega. So yeah. Those that that's the introduction to hyperreal numbers. That's pretty much what they are, and they're very useful in calculus because they're useful to gaining some intuition about limits. They were actually very integral to calculus's uh, discovery. Um, I did not mean to make that pun integral, <laughs> but yeah, they are very integral to their discovery. Newton, Leibniz used them a lot. Archimedes uh, even used them. He was so close to discovering calculus that Archimedes was actually very involved with using infinitesimals to approximate stuff. And you know they are. Uh, they were replaced with limits, sadly, because you know they weren't as rigorous and been able to be easily defined. However, uh, they came back. They came back in 1960 with Abraham Robinson and and his, I guess, his method of non-standard analysis, which where he replaced limits with infinitesimals and found a rigorous system to really deal with infinitesimals, and has been used in other systems of numbers like surreal numbers, or maybe. Um, not s smooth infinitesimal analysis, which are other fields that use infinitesimal. So they've been getting quite a resurgence recently, but not as popular as your mainstream real analysis like limits. So yeah, but they are still very, very intuitive and very, very great for calculus. So yeah, I will talk about them in the future. And you know, yay, infinitesimals are coming back. Yeah. <laughs>